All right, y'all, today I'm gonna be showing you something that I built in my first shed last year. It was kind of, it's kind of the finalized version of what I played with for a couple years there, but I got it to the point now where I think I've got it almost exactly how I want it. And I covered it in my first shed tour video just a little bit, but it really doesn't do it justice, guys. Other than my skinning machine and my fleshing beam, this thing sees the most action in my first shed, so. I'm just gonna kind of break it down for you guys and show you exactly what I use it for and really just show you guys how much I use it for and how many different species I can use it for as well. So it's kind of just a simple thing too that you don't have to build like mine at all, but to have something that serves the purpose as what it does is very useful in anyone's fur shed in my opinion. So without further ado, this is a setup here guys. It's a bunch of two by fours. It's all I built it out of, if you guys can see. It's got screws all the way along there. I got about 80 screws in this thing, all spread apart pretty evenly, because I use this thing for all sorts of different species, guys. But basically, one of the key components, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, on why this is very important, at least for what I use it for, is that these screws are 50 inches above the ground. And I will show you why that is so important. But anyways, guys, this thing, this thing's a lifesaver for me anyways. I love using it and I'm going to get it set up here and kind of show you guys everything that I can use this thing for. So I'll be right back with you after I get this baby set up. All right guys, so here's kind of my setup for how I'm going to explain to you guys everything that I use this for. I got an array of stretchers here and everything, but one of, one of the most important things that I've been using it for recently and kind of playing with on it, um, you guys can see I got a frozen raccoon right here. And then I got a, this coon just is thawed enough now to flesh, but I just wanted to lay a completely frozen one and a thawed out one next to each other. So I've found over the last couple months, if I hang up a frozen raccoon like this on these screws, this coon will thaw out faster from the gravity pulling it down than it will just sitting on the floor. I don't know why, it, it, there's some genius somewhere that's a lot smarter than me that could probably tell me exactly why but I've just noticed that if I hang a coon like this it will thaw out with the gravity faster than if it's just sitting on the floor in a pile with a bunch of other ones and then once it's thawed out like this one is I'll take my brush and I'll brush them out my brush is actually right over here but I'll actually just brush them out right on here guys I already got this one brushed out pretty good and everything but you guys can see there's hair and dirt and stuff all over the floor. I brushed out a lot of coon on this thing. So that's what I'll do as far as getting them to the fleshing stage. I'll also, when I'm skinning a raccoon, if it was a rainy day or whatever, and I'm skinning some wet coon, and I don't have time to let them dry out on the carcass, I'll skin them and hang them up here and let them hang for four or five hours, and then they'll usually be dry enough for me to throw into the freezer. But... I do not recommend hanging a whole carcass raccoon from these strictly because you know it's just these screws they're gonna bust off and I personally find that carcass coon thaw out better not thought they dry out better on the floor if they're on the carcass but if they're hanging like this and you got them dripping down I got a drain in the center of my floor over here that's gonna be your best way to dry out a skinned raccoon and then we move on from there. Here's the reason why I have this 50 inches above the ground, guys, as far as where the screws are at. So my small raccoon boards, they're for my 2X raccoon, they are 48 inches long. This screw must sit a little higher or something, but you guys can see right here, this coon stretcher is not touching the floor at all. It's still free floating, the same as if it would be up on the rack with all the other ones. So sometimes I'll even hang like before I had enough room in here to hang them on the ceiling especially, I'd hang my smaller boards down here and it worked great because I can fit quite a few of them in this little area here on those small boards. And then we go from raccoon, I'll go over to the rats. I hang all my rats on here. It's just a lot more convenient. They're not touching the wall. You don't want any part of that skin to be touching like a wall or something because it'll build up a little moisture spot and that could cause some pretty bad slippage. And then from the muskrat stretcher, we go over to my mink board here. 
Um, I got a hole drilled in the top of my mink board the same as I do my coon board. Um, and I'll hang my mink on here as well. I don't catch that many mink, but when I do catch them, I'll hang them on here. And then I got a beaver board. And that's probably what I've used this thing the most for as far as drying fur. Because I can stagger beaver in there and hang them all over in there and I hang them on the sides up. He just fell. Well, I'll get him back on there in a second. But as far as beaver boards go, I can fit three on this outside part right here one on the end and one on that end so i can really stack a lot of beaver boards in this tight little area with beaver on them and then i can stack beaver boards on top of this and lean it against the wall as well and i can really fit a lot of beaver boards in this small little area which is part of the reason why i love it so much but another thing i will show you guys i actually just set the camera up over here so you guys can kind of see this but there's sometimes if I'm running low on storage or whatever and I need an extra table, I'll take a beaver board and I'll just set it on top of here. The screws are still fine and everything. There's nothing wrong with setting that board up there and I can still have stuff hanging beneath it. But yet now I got this table space up here to where, I mean, I could even board beaver up here if I really wanted to, but I like boarding on my other table over there. But there's a lot of times, like, you know, like this year, for example, I had a stack of muskrats on top of here and a stack of finished beaver pelts. And that's just, it, it's extra space, not only on top, but below, if you guys can see that as well. I got a bunch of naffa bags and some boxes and stuff, colony trap, and then I lean all of my beaver boards against it. So, yeah, just a little tidbit for you guys there. Um, I'm not saying you have to do this by any means, but if you just... If you guys just build something semi-similar to this, I promise you no matter what species you're probably trapping, you'll be able to apply something like this in some sort of your handling of that fur. This will come in handy as far as going through that process at some point. So anyways guys, just um, thought I'd do a short little tidbit on that there for you. I love the thing. Um, I built mine pretty big. Um, that's really the only thing I changed about it was I made it bigger and put more screws in it when I knew I was going to start to grow my numbers pretty rapidly. And I trap a lot of creeks and stuff for raccoon too. And you know, they got to dry out and stuff. So I got to have quite a bit of screws in there to be able to dry them all out and get them in the freezer pretty fast. But, um, anyways, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I would highly recommend giving that thing a try or at least some form of it. And if you do, make sure, you know, it's 50 inches above the ground or higher because that'll make hanging those small coon stretchers and your beaver boards just work perfectly on there. So anyways, guys, until next time and thanks for watching.